morning. morning. Welcome to worship um, this October morning. We're so pleased to have all of you here worshiping with us in Sanctuary and also welcome to everyone worshiping with us at home um, from a distance. We're pleased to have each and every one of you here today. If you'll join me in the choral introit this morning, it's a new choral introit. You'll find the words on your screen. Um, You may remain seated as we sing. It's called I Sing Praises to Your Name. to worship is found on your screen. It is a call and response, so I will read the light print, and if you will respond with the bold print, please. Your steadfast love is before our eyes, O God. When tests and trials come, we place our trust in you, O knower of joy and suffering. Place us on level ground, O Redeemer. And if you'll pray the opening prayer with me, please, let us pray. Gracious God, through whom all things exist, we are mindful this day of siblings in faith around the world. We rejoice in our oneness with them. We are mindful, too, of those near at hand and those far away. 
those who suffer from ills and calamities, from wars and disasters, be present with them and us, we pray. Even as you fix our hearts on you and how we might, in faith, respond to the needs of neighbors around the world. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. You'll find the words on your screen, and if you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary today, it's also in the United Methodist Hymnal in your pews on page 400. And if you'll stand as able as we sing this morning. as well as those who might be worshiping at homes and different places. It is always a joy for God's people to come together. And I'm sorry, just I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I came in late to begin with, and my, all my stuff is so soaked with water because obviously my water bottle tipped over in my drive. So I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, calm down, so <laughs> just bear with me uh, with that. So uh, anyway, uh, it is always a joy, and uh, anyway, we come to the time of prayer. Uh, of course, there are so many prayer matters this morning. Uh, Steve, would you like to report to the rest of the congregation? Uh, yes, good morning, and thank you. Uh, my mom Ended her earthly journey Wednesday evening at 10.15. Um, she was in her home, surrounded by people who loved her. Um, and the, um, she lived a very faithful and loving life. Thank you all for your prayers. The um, services will be this coming Saturday at the South Chapel. Uh, visitation at 11 service at 12 and then and then the graveside service following that so um just thank i want to thank the mm -hmm. the church and, and everybody else for all of their prayers and everything that everybody has done for us in the last months or so thank you any other prayer matter you we need to pray for you <laughs> oh <laughs> thank you Okay. Anyone uh, else? Yes, Miss Kim have hands. Her hands. 
Just um, continue to pray for Richard. He is um, kind of, I, he, he's going to probably be getting up out of bed and walking to a different area this week to do some physical therapy. Mm -hmm. So um, he just right now is kind of just standing on it to sure. see how it feels. Okay. So right. hopefully he will get through this and get started on sure. that therapy and get mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Well, standing is uh, the start. So he's uh, evergreen, if I'm yes. not mistaken, uh, on uh, Millwood Road, Pike, whatever that is, and, uh, right by that, that railroad yeah. is, yeah. So if you have a chance, please go check on her, I mean him. Yeah. Them. I would like to pray for my papal Matt, because he's in a, a nursing home. Is Papa Max because he's in a nursing home? Okay, okay. So Leo's pop. Okay. Thank you, Leo. Yes. Uh. So uh, we want to pray for our great grandmother and our great grandfather right now who are working through some things based mm -hmm. on what our, the doctor told granddad. Um, and we think they're going to put their house on the market again and try to get back up here. Right. Um, but they are almost 90. So um, we're trying to take that slowly, and we're praying for the surgery that granddad's going to have in November. No, the other ones. What other ones? The ones that are dead. Oh, yeah. And then we pray for, and we're thankful for the ones that who are no longer with us. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Lisa. Amen. There we go. Right. And, uh, yes, uh, Marsha. Uh, of course, they want to pray for all the flood victims. I have friends in Asheville, and I have my niece in uh, Jessup, mm -hmm. Georgia, and they have, they're getting electricity back now, but mm -hmm. they're, fight, right. they're fighting, you know, recovery from the different buildings and things right. in the in the. Mm -hmm. town has been flooded and that kind of thing and sure. my niece said I, I thought it was quite timely she said this has all been really horrible so yeah right so keep them in your mind everybody mm -hmm. that's had right flood problems well actually uh that creates a great segue I mean you may have seen downstairs and up here the orange bucket uh Reverend Rhonda good friends uh he's she spoke what two Sundays ago yeah, a couple of Sundays ago, you, you know her well, right? Um, she felt the call uh, to take on this uh, flood bucket uh, challenge, which is, this is one of the kits that the UMCOR, uh, United Methodist Committee on Relief, is, uh, always asks, uh, along with hygiene kits and some other kits. But anyway, uh, She's challenging both churches to fill in uh, eight buckets. So even more, the more the better. But the, uh, I just wanted to kind of get your attention. There is a the instruction sheet to go with it. And this is the complete uh, bucket that you can take a look at, but it's kind of on the bottom hiding. So we'll make sure that, that we would uh, put it in a place that way you can see what goes in uh, in the end after you collect all the necessary items and fill the bucket. But those will be uh, sent to all the victims of recent hurricane and flooding and all that. So both uh, conference and a district uh, are encouraging each local church to do that. And I was talking to her this past week and I was telling her how I couldn't find my bandwidth to spearhead the project and that she was like you know if that's the case I'll do it so there it is so I'm thankful for her willingness but also if now uh, I'm asking for your willingness to go out and collect the needed items uh bring it back by Wednesday actually because the Thursday is a collection because the time is the essence at this point or the cleaning effort so um, if you'd like to know more uh I have an uh, instruction sheet, and I'll try to be, make myself available as long as I can today. Carol. When are they due here at the church? Wednesday. When, this Wednesday? Yeah, because the district-wide collection is on Thursday, so that they will be shipped promptly to where it needs to be. So I know... For October, they can bring their oh, that's right. Yeah, if you're coming back for the October 
Oktoberfeast, for example, you're more than welcome to bring them back and set them maybe downstairs somewhere that's not uh, uh, that's out of the way. But uh, anyway, yes, Mr. Kevin. Yeah, I was going to say those coming to Oktoberfeast, you can bring them back. We where we had them stacked downstairs by the organ, and uh, I met Rhonda here and Dave to to set those up. Be careful, Keiko. That's heavy. The other thing I would say is the. Uh, Besides the instructions, UMCOR has a very nice video they put together on how to do it and shows actually packing one, the easiest way to do it. So if you go online, you can watch that video of how to do it. Great. Thank you so much. So we'll talk more, but I just wanted to kind of, uh, uh, this is not just a nice display, but this is for you to take home and feel it. So now uh, let us go together to God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day, this beautiful Sunday morning. But even uh, uh, in this beauty, I know we, are, we have so many brothers and sisters who live different parts of the country, still suffering from the af aftermath of this recent hurricane. I just ask that the, may we always be the people that serves. May we always be the people that help others. May we always be the people of love that connects people between one another, but also connects us and God. So be with us in this worship and help us that we might continue to shine your love in the world. And also, I ask that the we will willingly use our hands, our feet, our time, our resources to serve you and all your people. <coughs> this morning, we have lifted up some of the prayer concerns, prayer requests, both for ourselves or for, the, for those whom we love. Please be with all the persons who might be facing challenges, who are grieving, who are needing clear direction in their lives, who needs a community to be a part of, who are yearning for hope and peace. Be with each and all God's children. And especially we lift up, continue to lift up Greenwood Church and each and all the persons who are part of this community, also the many ministries of Greenwood Church. May this place always shine the light of Jesus Christ and invite people so that they may find love, they may find peace, and they may find comfort. We also pray for the world, especially where there is violence, war, or uh, victims of natural disasters of many kinds. All the people who might be shorting necessities. We just ask that, that you would be present of each of the souls, so that no matter what might be happening, they might find the glimpse of your hope and glimpse of your love. Please be in our lives today and all the days of our lives. So now let us pray together as God's people the Lord's Prayer, the prayer Jesus told us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. So now I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able. May we together recite the Apostles' Creed. 
words on the screen. May we together say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, so we've come to the part of the service where we see what's happening in the lives of our church family. So our first slide this morning, it looks like, um, is actually um, from, well, it's from Carter. You were in the, uh, you performed for the, well, played for the Legally Blonde musical at Shenandoah. Do you like to say a few words or no? No? Not really. <laughs> well... I'm sure you did a wonderful job, and we see from the picture that uh, Reverend Rhonda and Dave were there to, to see um, one of the performances, um, and it looks like everyone had a good time. So, thank you, Carter. <laughs> and then our next slide is regarding the Umcor cleaning buckets that we talked about just a little bit ago. Um, we would like to have the full buckets, um, all of the items here, um, by Wednesday at the church um, and as we said if you're coming for October feast this week you can bring your items and put them you can probably put them in that little green Sunday school room that's downstairs that way they'll kind of be out of the way um, but just bring your items back by Wednesday so that the buckets can be assembled and sent to where they need to go our next slide is um, about the pancake breakfast today at the Greenwood Fire Company it's from 8 a.m., so it's going on now to 1 p.m. today. It's $10 all you can eat. They have a very large breakfast menu, it looks like, for a pancake breakfast. So uh, Miss Tammy and Miss Pam are there waiting for you. Stop by and say hi. Have some breakfast for lunch or maybe brunch um, and uh, support the fire company today. And then our next slide is about October feast. Mr. Kevin, would you like to extend an invitation? I would like to extend a big invitation okay. to have everybody come join us. We start tonight with uh, Reverend uh, Browder, who will be here, and the, our musical guest is Higher Power, and they will be here with us tonight. And then tomorrow night, our uh, district superintendent, Reverend Gomez, will be here, and we have the potluck dinner courtesy of the United Women in Faith. That's at 530. The service is at 7. So please come join us. And then, as I said, uh, Tuesday night, we have... Reverend uh, Margaret Kutz, uh, again, my uh, reverend from when I was about 14 years old, so please don't hold that against her um, and, and all that, but she's a wonderful minister, and uh, Keiko knows her, and I know that uh, Rhonda, when I was talking to her the other day, she said, oh my gosh, she said, I know her, so she's apparently very well known, and uh, so please come join us. I think we're having him sings. We had, uh, by the way, we had a lot of great suggestions. Charles and I worked as many of the hymns as we could into everything. So I think everybody's going to enjoy it. And please come and, and have faith with us. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. And then our next slide is um, apple gleaning. So gleaning season is finally here. Um, we're doing apple gleaning now. You can see the link on, your, on the screen that um, you, can, you can go to to get the dates and times of, of when the apple gleaning will be done. Um, and if you have any further questions, uh, you can see Pastor Keiko um, or myself. We can get you the information if, if, if you need that. Um, but the link there will have the dates and times for apple gleaning. And if you have any special events or any special things happening in your life that you'd like to share with your church family, you can send those slides and information to Pastor Keiko directly or to the church email. It's found on your screen. We'd like to have that information by Friday of each week so that we can include it in the slideshow for the upcoming Sunday. And now it's time for the children's message. Good morning, children. Come on down. Happy Sunday. Happy October. Oh, I love you, Leo. What a beautiful sight. 
Okay, everybody, everybody have a seat. We're going we're gonna to try something this morning, okay? I need everybody to take a big, huge breath and hold it. When I count to three, wait, wait, don't jump the gun. One, two, three. As big as you can, okay, hold it, hold it, all right? Now, when I count to three again, we're going to take another huge breath. One, two, three. Okay. I have a question. I have a question for you. Could you take as much breath the second time as you did the first time? I couldn't. I, I took the big, deep breath, and then I didn't have room to take the second breath. So if you guys could, your lungs are much better than mine. But this is an example of our scripture sermon this morning. We have to let go of things to get more things like air. And it's pretty scary. If you think about it, every time you breathe, you're letting go of something that is very important to you. But we're kind of faithful that there's going to be more air. So in our, in our scripture lesson this morning, this very, very rich man comes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, how can I be closer to God? You know what his answer was? He said, sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Now, the rich man, he needed all of his things. All of his things were important. His nice Nike shoes and his nice glasses and everything that he had worked for was important to him, almost as important as air is to us. And the guy couldn't do it, so he just walked away. But Jesus said, this is what you need to do in order to be closer to God. Let go of the bad things in your life and spend more time with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, for teaching us how to love and show mercy. Amen. We need to walk. Thank you, Mr. Steve, and all the children. So now we come to the time of giving. May we uh, give back to the Lord with the hearts of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Oh, God, we give you thanks for this day and this hour of worship when we are able to open our hearts to come to you to hear your word. And thank you for the many gifts that you give in many different ways. It is time for us to bring the gifts back to you. We pray that you would would honor our gifts and use them for your glory. We thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Together sing the doxology.
If you'll pray the prayer of illumination with me, please, it's found on your screens. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. And our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers, and sisters, mothers, and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thank you so much, Heather. So... You may have heard it on the news or TV. After the devastation of uh, Helene, many uh, celebrities stood up and uh, showed their support to the relief efforts. I read it somewhere that the, uh, like a different multiple teams of the NFL footballs, mostly like from like Carolina, Texas, uh, in that region, Florida. Georgia, too, I think. They came together, individuals and family came together and donated like $8 million. I know that's a lot, yeah. And, uh, and singer Morgan Wallen gave $500,000. Dolly Parton gave $1 million, and Dollywood decided to match it to, uh, for another $1 million, and the total, total of $2 million. The list continues. Many of us, too, although the amount might be uh, a lot smaller than that, but uh, we try to do something. Maybe some of you already may have donated to UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, or maybe perhaps other organize, organizations that you already, already support. I like to believe that, uh, generally speaking, we want to make a positive difference in the world, in the lives of others. By lending help to friends, or neighbors, communities, or even strangers near and far. Sometimes we just don't know how. But today's scripture seems to remind us and also challenge us that we ought to seek ways to live and serve God and others using our time, using the gift that was given to us, and of course, the resources. Well, today's actually text is actually from a sign for the following next Sunday, 
uh, in a, a lectionary reading text. And the similar, that, like the same story with slight variation, can be found both in Matthew and Luke's gospel. So this was shortly before Jesus entered into Jerusalem. So he knew that the, his earthly ministry is re- kind of coming closer to the end. The text reads, Jesus was setting out on a journey. Sure, he was always on the go when he was teaching and healing, uh, doing his ministry. But perhaps there might be an implication that he is set on a journey toward Jerusalem to be crucified, of course. Anyway, uh, a man ran up and knelt before Jesus. Good Good teacher, not just a teacher, good teacher. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Life with God that is not destroyed by death, which begins here and now. By the way, that was a translation for the children's Bible. See, children's Bible sometimes teaches us, you know, have a better translation at times. I think this man was sincere when he came up, knelt on Jesus, and asked that question. He really wanted to know what to do or what he had to do to be a disciple. And he believed that Jesus could give him an answer. Jesus responds, first off, God alone is good. Then he continued, you know the commandments, And here Jesus quotes the latter six out of Big Ten, which the first four is to our relationship with God, but the rest of the six are our relationship with one another. That's the part that Jesus responds. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, that's the part he changed it slightly. Uh, you know, you, you might remember as you shall not covet, right? But for this man, he's got everything. There's nothing to covet, you're right? From, so Jesus would say, you shall not defraud. And then, honor your father and mother. The man responds, teacher, I know them all. In fact, I kept them from my youth all these years. Jesus said to him, you lack one thing. Sell you own what you own and give money to the poor. Then follow me. What happened next? Bishop William writes this way. Quote, with that, Mark says this man slumped down, got real depressed, gets back into his Porsche, and leaves. He was shocked by what the good teacher told him. He went away, grieved. He dropped the course, lost interest in the subject, and went in a different direction where the good teacher was not. I was curious, what was he expecting to hear from Jesus? I don't know. Have you ever thought of that? I wonder what he, did he want it, a pat in the back and say, I know that you are a good man. You have obeyed the law all these years. Keep up the good work. Or Jesus would say, well, maybe share a little bit of what you have. Not like all, some all. I, I'm curious. For whatever it may have been, what he, what he was told was something that he was not expecting and he couldn't follow. And I'm sure that 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 made Jesus sad, too. Because he was the only person in Mark's gospel whom Jesus said to love. He loved him and gave him that answer, which he did. And he was the only person in Mark's gospel who turned, he was invited by Jesus to follow him and didn't. 
The story continues. Jesus says, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's like camel going through the eyes of the needle. Well, there, there have been different explanations because you know, everybody knows that you know, how tiny the, the eye of the needle is and how big the, the, the camel is. Maybe there was a, a translation mistake between rope, which is calim, calimos, and camel. It's a calmelos. So he, what he, what the original author meant was a rope, not the camel. Or there, there, there's a fictional, uh, people don't, today don't think that they, they existed. But there was a little gate called cam, uh, Needle's Eye, where camel have to unload everything and sort of kneel down to go through. Whatever that might, might be the case, it's, uh, I believe Mark, or Jesus, for that matter, was talking about impossible possibility. See, all the people who was listening to him were shocked. So who can be saved then? We know that we cannot save ourselves. Only God can. We don't earn God's favor or God's salvation through good works. See, in spite of who we are, it is God who chooses to love us, who chooses to bring us so many blessings in so many ways. And it is God who shows us God's mercy and forgiveness. And the same God calls us friends and beloved children. And the same God invites us to be in the right relationship with God. See, some of you might be thinking, this is not a story for me because I'm, I'm not a millionaire. I don't have all the things I want. You know, this must be that for the super rich people near and far. But think about it. Whatever it may be, we all draw some lines. If you think, honestly, there is a line or standard of living that you like to keep, economic class, so to speak, that you wish to associate with, privilege, status, power that you like to maintain. As I was writing, that, the one of the funny things that came to my mind, in Japan, okay, most people are business people, okay? There are a group of people who, who do this thing called mileage training. Okay, you might be thinking like the mileage to run like a, a mile, five miles. No, it's not that I'm not talking about. They fly airplanes simp just so that they can earn more mileage. That put them themselves to be uh, like that, you know, I don't know, upgrade to the first class or uh, uh, exclusive access to a very fancy lounges in the airport and things like that. So basically, they would like, take an entire day going back and flying back and forth, back and forth, just to get more miles. I think that's so silly, but to them, it's important. Having that class, having the perks, having that access to fancy things matters. So we have... We might, I don't know, if you do that, I'm sorry. I don't, no offense to, to any of you, I'm sorry. But, but, I mean, good luck with doing that. But uh, we, the point is, we all have something, whether if it's a comfortable living or a nice home with whatever fancy furniture, whatever that might be the case. We all have standard that we wish to keep in our own lives. But Jesus challenges all of that. The story makes us wonder, how much are we willing to give up of those of my kingdom so that we might become part of God's kingdom? How much are we willing to change our lifestyles or change our priority or choices that we make 
in our day-to-day -day lives so that our life might reflect Christ more. How open are we to be, to live as Jesus' disciples, using our hands, our time, and our resources? Think about it. Instead of saying, I don't mind serving in a committee, for example, in a church's ministry, as long as it doesn't take up my time. Can we maybe think in a way, maybe I would like to hold an office and take more time to get deeper involved in this church's ministry? Or can we say something like, I only serve whenever we have an extra time. But instead of saying that, can we say, I will make time to serve God and others, whatever the way it might be, and then manage the rest of the time doing what I want to do or what I need to do a lot of times. Or instead of saying, I give to the church whenever I have some extra change left at the end of the month, I'll put my giving to the higher priority and try to manage with the rest. For example, um, I am paid twice a month, and I have been, it has been my discipline that I was, whenever the, the income comes into my account, first thing I sit, do is just, I do an old fashioned checkbooks, right? I write a check, one for Greenwood, one for Market Street, and try to manage the rest with the rest, right? So to me, that's, that's to me an intentional spiritual discipline that the put giving to God through the church to the highest of priorities and go down the rest. I'm not saying that, that you should do what I do, but that's, I found it to be one of the spiritual exercises. Bishop Tom Berlin used to serve in here in uh, Virginia Conference, now ser serves as a bishop in Florida. He once wrote, quote, in the kingdom of self, so whatever the kingdom that we try to establish, in the kingdom of self, people are often end up wounded. But Jesus talked and demonstrated that when people are present in the kingdom of God, they are healed. In the kingdom of self, grudges prevail. But in the kingdom of God, people are forgiven of sins. In the kingdom, kingdom of self, strife, contempt, and bitterness abide. But in the kingdom of God, kindness, compassion, love, and justice reign. So in the coming week, I'd like to challenge you. Which kingdom would you choose to live? Kingdom of self or kingdom of God? And also, in what ways might you change your life, your priority, so that you might able to be available to serve God and God's people more? Thanks be to God. Amen. So now we come to the time, the holy sacrament of Holy Communion, when we are able to touch, taste, and feel the grace of God that is so abundant in all our lives. So what we would like to do today, once again, due to the time, we would like to pray the prayer of confession together. And then I'll offer a short prayer to consecrate those elements. Thus, we are able to come to the table together. So, hold on a second.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now please join me in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks that we are able to come together in worship, opening our hearts, opening our lives, yearning to hear your word, being touched by your love, and be changed and challenged so that we might continue the life of discipleship, not just on Sundays, but all the days of our lives that we come to the Lord's table, the holy sacrament of Holy Communion, just as Jesus did with his friends that night long ago, taking the bread and said, this is my body, take and remember. And also took the cup and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, drink from this all of it for the forgiveness of our sins. So now we will do the same because we want to be and live as your servants all the days of our lives. So we pray that the, you will consecrate those elements, those bread and the juice, and all the persons who are going to receive them, so that we will commit our lives once again to you and to your ministry here in the world. Be with us today and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're one people in Christ as we take from the one bread, body of Christ, and a cup of salvation for you, for me, for you, for us all. So, Heather, would you come on up and help again, please? So we would uh, do the same way for the uh, she would, uh, as always, she has an individual cup, and I'll give you that small piece of bread. That's we take the body and the blood of Christ. And uh, as Asher invites you, please come on up on the center aisle if you go around to make it back to your own seat. And today we have a few buckets here and instruction on how to fill the buckets. So if you feel led, please take those with you. And even, uh, we only have about eight empty buckets, but if you like to do your own, might as well. Just take it, learn it. There's a video uh, link, etc. And uh, that's one tangible way that we are able to use our time and resources to help brothers and sisters. Or if you like to bring some cash offerings, they will be also sent to UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. So there's another wonderful way as well. So now, please come. The table is ready.
So now please join me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us, let us uh, conclude our worship today uh, by singing the, the closing hymn today, the summons. Our words can be found in, uh, on the screen or if you see a black thing, the face we sing book it's going to be 2130 please there uh, stand as you're able and join in singing <laughs>
May the grace of Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, go with you, and always.